Sometimes it takes an outsider to tell people what they've got. So let me remind you of an extremely urgent fact. Nowhere in the world is there a landscape more artfully worked or more lovely to behold than the countryside of Britain. But when I look around the country today, I see litter and rubbish piling up and ruining the landscape. It's just not the place that I fell in love with. When I first came to Britain in 1972, I was instantly smitten with the place, and for all kinds of reasons. A big part of what appealed to me about Britain was how tidy it was, how orderly, how civilized and well put together. I'd never been to a place that was so manicured and so loved. But now we should be ashamed of the mess that we allow to greet visitors. I think it's not that clean. We've been looking and it's not very good. It's not a clean city, obviously. We noticed a lot of local people just leaving their litter around. So we were actually quite shocked about that. Increasingly, wherever you go, you are met by an all too literal underlayer of grubbiness and squalor. I don't understand what's happened, what's gone wrong, and why people are willing to live with it. Britain's hoping to attract millions of extra visitors to the 2012 Olympics, and this is the site that they'll be met with in East London. If you came to London, you would want to see one of London's iconic landmarks, and you would come and take a stroll along the river, and you look down into the water, you will see rubbish floating past. And I think that will tell, that will tell visitors to London that people don't care. They don't care about the river, therefore they don't care about the environment, therefore they don't care about London. Litter has increased relentlessly ever since I've been here, a whopping 500%. It's like background noise. People have come to accept it. And I, I think if people were able to look at it with fresh eyes, it might just shock them out of that acceptance. All too often government behaves as if it's still 20 years ago and there's not really very much litter about. I think that's completely wrong. We've moved way past the age of keep Britain tidy. It's time now to get Britain tidy. I've bitched and moaned about things for most of my adult life, but just this once I thought that I'd try and make a difference. Somebody's got to do something about it. So I've taken on the role of president of the Campaign to Protect Rural England, and with them I've launched a crusade against litter. Well, we have to do that. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. A clean environment tends to stay clean, but a dirty one will always get dirtier. The laws are tough, but they're not being applied. That's the problem. Around a bit more. I think the government is waking up to the fact that this is a political issue. I mean, there's votes in, in de dealing with litter. It's not asking very much, really, is it? except just to do the decent thing. Public enemy number one, hunted all over the world. I remember when litter was a national shame, and we had TV adverts telling us to keep Britain tidy featuring the stars of the day, such as Roy Hudd. Keep litter to yourself. Put it here. But I fear Keep Britain Tidy isn't the presence it once was, and litter has slipped down the national agenda. Keep Britain Tidy used to be very visible, and now we don't see them anything like as much. What's, where, where have you been? What's well, happened? <laughs> well, Keep Britain Tidy is part of the heritage. Um, uh, in, in the 70s, we did a lot of very high-profile uh, television uh, advertising with, with top you know, A-list celebrities. Two things have happened, really. One is that the media has changed, so we don't have three or four television channels. We'd have three or four hundred now. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the celebrities themselves generally charge sort of substantial sums of money to be involved, which I don't believe they did at that time. And thirdly, we, have tr uh, we know much more about who within the population litters. So Keep It Entirely put their resources into education in schools, research into littering, and smaller targeted campaigns. Litter. By encouraging children to dispose of their litter properly, local authorities can save thousands of pounds spent cleansing key routes to schools. But this leaves us with no high-profile campaign to remind us that it's our job to take care of our own litter. And that's a story I hear all the time. No national plan and no real leadership. Take, for example, the laws on littering. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, littering operation... Britain's got some of the toughest litter laws in Europe but it's left to individual councils to decide on how to enforce them. We'll be fined. Each There's no consistent national approach. Don't get smiled. 
Here in the London borough of Southwark, they track down litterers and hit them with fixed penalties of up to 75 pounds. Nearly 3,000 issued in the last year. Yet other councils, such as Camden across the river, don't bother catching litter louts. They issued zero fines last year. So that sends out a mixed message. Some places it's okay to drop your trash on the streets. Yeah, if you take this side, walk up that way. And other places it's not. I'm not an unquestioning fan of fines, but I think they're needed now, and they seem to work. Four years ago, Southwark was one of the dirtiest boroughs in the UK. Now it's one of the cleanest in London. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that they've enthusiastically embraced the fixed penalty notice. Councils keep the funds they raise from penalty notices, and last year Southwark collected over £100,000, money that's used for litter education. Okay, anything else, everybody? You quite clearly put it on the floor and walked away from it. I've picked it up since. So, in section 87 of the EPA, okay. and they're going to issue a fixed penalty fine. But you can't. Yes, I can. Where's the litter? You pick the litter up. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, this so is not an offensive weapon. I'm sorry, sorry, Callum, just, I'm, I'm ahead of the service. Yeah, so okay, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm don't, yeah. All right. We spend over six and a half million pounds a year sweeping our streets. And of that six and a half million pounds a year, we 75% of that is smoking related. Fair and, comment. And, and, and so... I don't have any uh, argument with the concept. But when you see... It's, uh, <laughs> poor guy get caught like this. Is, oh, don't go have... soft on me, Bill. I'm the fine of a littering defence on the section 87. No, you have to do it. But otherwise, we just... I mean, you know, when, when I got here in 2002, we were third, fourth, dirtiest borough in London. That's a, that's a disgrace. All right, guys. All right. Yeah. Have a good day. I'm, well, I'm here with the camera crew. Would you oh, well, hello there. I'm Bill Bryson. Making, we're making a, um, a program about... Bill Bryson? Yeah. 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 You know with who all I am? the books, yeah? Yeah. Self-help books and that kind of well, thing. That kind of thing, yeah, I sometimes. Just yeah, Very nice to meet you. Yeah. So what, what do you make of all that? All that? Well, um, to be honest, it's a little bit of a hypocrisy when you have a look a little bit further than beyond that bin. But the question is, is this going to change the way... You, you going to throw any fire guns down again now? It's yep, old one next time. <laughs> <laughs> he comes after me. <laughs> to be honest, Bill, you are doing a good job. Go, go over. I've been to Japan, South America, been to America, and England streets. They are quite a mess, to be honest. Take care of yourself. You, okay. have, you have a good day, Thank guys. You. Nice okay, nice to meet you. Good luck. Cost me fifty pounds. All the best. Thank Thanks you. Take care. Be Cheers. lucky. So, I mean, 50 pounds is a lot just to throw a cigarette butt down, but this is the kind of thing it takes in order to modify people's behavior. The trouble with fines as a deterrent is that in most circumstances you face almost no chance of being caught. In fact, if you live in Camden, Harrogate, Derbyshire, Salisbury, Stanford, or Woking, to name just a few of the 74 authorities that gave out no fixed penalty litter notices at all last year, you won't be caught at all, ever. And when I look around, I don't see a great deal of political will to do anything about it. Well, I think it could be very attractive to be the great waste dictator, you know, and be able to say, this will happen, there won't be any more of this, and I, I will choose all the penalties. But could you imagine what my postbag would be like? I mean, I would probably be lynched. Pardon me, but you should see my postbag. 